Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandra Grasse, and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Right, today is Tuesday, 31st of July. If you're watching this after, sorry. Uh, this is your last chance to go online, iicmc.com, and get your damn ticket to get to Melbourne, Australia. You need to go to this conference. Do you treat fertility in your clinic? This is the place for you to go. Remember what they have on their website, the supercharger fertility practice? I'm not kidding. Even if you if you don't know some of these speakers, I can tell you that I know like 80 to 90 percent of them and they are fabulous. So get yourself out there. I'm going to show you now the rest of the interview with Kirsten Wolf and Claire Pyers. They're organizing the IICMC in Melbourne. That's the 9th of November to the 11th of November. It's it's going to be amazing. We're going to get to network and um, we're going to get to support each other, share experiences, share new research learn about what we're doing in different parts of the world this is the place to be so please check it out today is the last day the early bird ends today july 31st go on the website and check it out and without any further ado let's hear it from claire pyers and kirsten wolf but it's just like what claire was saying about you know that that bit of time in between the lectures the the q a sessions when you have that opportunity to just Put, put yourself out there and ask the question. It could be even just about someone that you were seeing in the clinic. Those were really the, um, like the juicy bits that I was getting from the, uh, from the conferences. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as well, you know, people, um, you know, just they, there's so much value that you get from hearing other people's questions mm -hmm. and, and hearing those responses. And, and if someone's asking a question, guaranteed there's going to be a handful of other people who, wished that they'd asked that question or who, you know, were thinking, oh, I'd love to ask that question and then didn't, and didn't ask it. So there's always multiple people who are receiving, you know, those, those answers. It's not just the people who are, who are asking the questions. Mm. And I think as well, like, it's important to remember that, I mean, obviously new grads, you know, it's totally relevant for them to come and we do have some pre-conference yeah. Um, webinars to you know just on the basics just so that people can get their um, their basic knowledge um, so they can get the most out of it so even people who are brand new to treating fertility have you know they're still in the starting blocks it's just as relevant for those people as it is for people who have been in practice for 10 or 20 plus years mm -hmm. um, you know it's good to come you know even if you've got a look and we do have practitioners coming who that's all they do is they work in fertility and yes they're going to know potentially 90 percent of the content but it's that 10 percent that you don't yeah. know that you come yeah. for and that's where the gold is mm. um and so and that's definitely the value that i get um as an experienced practitioner when i go to conferences is that you know it's those little snippets those little gold nuggets that you get of that, you know, that five ten percent of knowledge that you don't already have that helps to fill in the gaps and really, um, you know, you can lift your game in clinics. So, you know, there's um, the content's going to be relevant for people at whatever stage that they're at, and we support people to be able to make the most of that. Mm. And, and, and just uh, hanging out with the whole group of acupuncturists is awesome. Yeah, I remember when I went to the IF symposium, like the first one, and just being surrounded by so many acupuncturists was just fantastic. Yeah, and you do really get that sense of you know everyone supporting each other, and even you know you make those connections. And after the um, after these conferences, you know something happens in your clinic, or you have a question, these people are reachable as well, and you can just send in um, send in your questions and, and ask for it. So from from the point of view of someone. Like myself, for example, never have been, you know, I was never out there in that direction. What would be your advice? You know the area, you know Melbourne, you know the area, you know, obviously, you know Australia well as well. For someone coming from outside Australia, what is the best advice you can give? Like, if, if I have any questions about where to go to and do I go a few days before, do I go, what's the weather like, what's the transport, you know, transportation, is it easy to get to and from? What's your best advice? Well, Melbourne's four seasons in a day. <laughs> so you have to dress in layers. It can be cold in the morning and then 30 degrees in the afternoon. Okay. So definitely dress with layers. Um, 
Claire knows Melbourne City better than me. I live out in the near the beach. <laughs> There's a beach. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, definitely you need to be dressed appropriately. So you'll need, you know, like a thick top layer of some sort and then potentially, you know, um, short sleeves, a dress of some sort for the ladies. And, um, yeah, you, clothing is important and, you know, an umbrella. It's, it, um, it, it really is no joke. Like our weather is quite unpredictable and it's you know it's one of the endearing things about melbourne um we have we're known as kind of like the culture capital of australia and so there's lots of really great places to eat um there's lots of really great um shows and art mm. exhibitions and um and those types of things so for people who enjoy that type of cultural experience then definitely coming before or staying afterwards for a few days. There's mm. lots of opportunity to do things like that. Mm. Um, it's right in the middle or right after our spring racing carnival season. Um, and so for people who are coming earlier to, the, um, to Melbourne before the conference, there's um, a public holiday on the Tuesday before the conference with um, one of the world's richest horse races on. So some okay. people are into that kind of thing and ladies get all dressed up and, mm. um, you know, and that's a big event and some people prefer to avoid things like that, in which case then come after the conference. <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay a few days there. But, you know, there's lots of nature things to do as well. Um, an hour or two away by car, you can see some really beautiful scenery along the Great Ocean Road and the Twelve Apostles, which is a very kind of famous stretch of, of beach, a very beautiful road um, and a great place to drive um, and maybe doing an overnight stay down there. Um, people who are into wine, we've got some great wineries out in um, an area that we call the Yarra Valley, which is about an hour out of the Melbourne CBD and lots of beautiful bed and breakfast you know, little boutique places to stay at um, and wineries with, you know, great, great meals and, and um, you know, wine tasting and that, you know, for people who are into that kind of thing. Yeah. So lots of, lots of tourism stuff is also for people who haven't, who aren't in, um, aren't from Australia, there's lots of opportunities to see kangaroos and, um, and koalas and, <laughs> and that kind of thing too, which is, um, which is always nice for the, um, for the overseas visitors. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the other aspect of, of uh, traveling and going to the conferences that, you know, if you're going to somewhere new, you're probably going to go for a few extra days either before or after just to yeah. get and see the, um, and see, see around and then what, you know, getting a little bit of the culture and stuff like that. But even, even with that, like you had a, a, I know it's probably just my eye that picked up on that. But the um, you had the nice taste of the the very first day. I did see the word well, for two two very important words, which is a cocktail and party. Oh um, yes, we are having I, a cocktail party. <laughs> I don't know if it was just me, but I I really I really I I, I could see that one straight away, and um, and that's very good because that's then involved with the on on a very on a serious note then with the um, getting the point getting to the point as well. And part of the um, the, the ticket um, um, money also goes to the uh, the Acupuncture Now Foundation. Now Foundation. Can you talk yeah. about that a, a little bit? Yeah. So five dollars of every ticket goes to the Acupuncture Now Foundation. We really love supporting them, and um, we're going to be showing their movie "Getting to the Point" on the cocktail night. So when you buy your ticket, you get a ticket to the cocktail night, mm -hmm. meet and greet everyone, and get to watch the movie. It'll be mm -hmm. great fun. And that is, again, like the time where, you know, it's a little bit more relaxed than the, the, the Q&A session, but you can still be talking shop, as they say. And that's the, the great opportunity to, to network and to connect with, with other people. So that's a very nice thing that, that, you're, that you're doing there. So the support for the, uh, for the Acupuncture Now Foundation, I think that it's great. And I think that the more people know about it, the better. I've had Matthew on the vlog many, many times. And there is quite an active branch of the Acupuncture Now Foundation in Australia as well. So I would imagine imagine that that would just even drive that um you know that awareness even further yeah absolutely and um throughout the duration of the conference we'll be running um other fundraising activities for the for the anf so um mm. you know we're really looking forward to um to getting so, you know a nice size check that we can um, hand over to the acupuncture now mm -hmm. foundation because they're really doing some great stuff in terms of 
supporting our industry and bringing awareness to um, to what we can do for people with with our acupuncture treatments. Mm-hmm. From the from the list of speakers, there there's a few that obviously are, are they I don't know are they from Australia? Are they not as I don't know them or I don't know them as well as I know the other ones. What got you? What 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 was your plan and what was your structure in terms of okay we're going to definitely going to ask this person definitely going to ask that person were you following a pattern were you looking for no. <laughs> some particular some particular part of the fertility because i know you have like that that running the clinic as well aspect and uh, at at the conference too so there was no plan that's the best way to go <laughs> oh, there was a plan. There was a plan. we need to give ourselves some credit there was a plan <laughs> we had a wish list didn't we Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we had some topics of um, of things mm. that we thought would be important to cover. You know, we wanted to really make sure that we covered the male aspect of fertility, which is yeah. so often forgotten. Um, we wanted to make sure that we covered off the business aspect um, and also the mindset aspect mm. as well, which is really important. And so, um, in in those particular categories, there's three Australians who I guess came came to mind. Um, and so they're, they're the speakers, Jeff Shearer, who is a, um, a Chinese medicine practitioner who's been practicing for over 20 years and he runs a, um, a business coaching um, okay. business. Um, and so he's got some really great insights. Um, we've got Peter Kington, who's an Australian practitioner as well, and he, he um, has a big focus on male fertility. Um, and then Paul Michel, who's, um, I think Kirsten can speak a little bit more about his expertise, but he does um, yeah, NLP. Paul's, yeah, NLP and hypnosis. And he's been a corporate coach for a long time with a background in remedial medicine and used to design supplements as well. Okay. And he's also studied acupuncture. Hmm? He's also studied acupuncture. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then obviously, then there's the um, the ones that would be, I suppose, from this part of the world that we would know a little bit better. But even for me, like one of the things that I got straight away, there was those three names from Australia that I knew that I wanted to go and and definitely see, I suppose, see live, and that was Jane Littleton, um, Peter Kington, who I know, and also Caroline Smith, which I had a few bits in contact with during my my master's degree. So it was like, okay, those ones. Apart from the ones I've met before at previous conference, I was like, that's it. That's for me. This is it. And a lot of the times it's like that. You know a few of them, but you just get your surprises when you're actually there at the conference and you just get to see someone that you didn't know of and you just go, wow, I really like this this type of work. Yeah, we're so proud to have Jane. She doesn't talk much anymore. Mm. Yeah, I can't wait to listen to her and her new topic as well. She's talking about the contented ovaries. Mm. Yeah, and we've also got two um, IVF doctors who um, are based here in Melbourne and they have a very holistic, integrative approach to, um, to the treatment of their patients. And so that's very, um, we're very excited to have them as well mm. where they can um, share a little bit more insight and depth of knowledge around the IVF process mm-hmm. um, and just help to put some of the information into context. I was going to ask you that because I did notice that from the from the program. So in terms of even for for someone going in and, and will we get that little extra view of where are you in, in Australia or even if it's just Melbourne in terms of integration and in terms of working together? Is that going to be one of the aspects of that we can then take from there and bring to our own practice and bring to our own country? Yeah, Nick. Nick is a um, IVF doctor. He thinks outside the box here. Mm. So he's known for doing stuff that no one else does. And he Mm. has a very holistic approach and is very happily to refer to acupuncturists, which is great. Mm. And David Wilkinson as well is from City Fertility. So he wants to talk about the advancements of IVF in Australia. So you'll Mm. see where we're at. Yeah. 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 And he's also very much into acupuncture um, working alongside IVF, which is great. That's pretty cool. Too. That they can come and learn more about us as well and what we have to offer. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And this is that, that part about you know it's not just us connecting with other practice with you know other acupuncturists, other practitioners. It's from their side as well to be there and to see that you know we are serious about this. There's research being mentioned all the yeah. time at these conferences, and you know they they can trust us and we can trust them and we can work together. 
Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I agree anymore with Claire about the bringing stuff to clinic on Monday, because I think that by Monday I'll still be there and probably for the <laughs> next Monday I'll probably still be there. <laughs> Some Monday in the future, that will be yeah. it. Be it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I will have, I, I will try to have this out as, as soon as possible. And that's because of the early bird being, um, you know, the end being on the 31st of July. People can go on the website if they have any particular questions. I take it that on the website will be a good. I you know there, there's there's contact forms and they can contact get us. We'll get back to you, help you in whatever way we can. Answer any questions. Like we're just at the end of an email, we respond very quickly. Mm. Anything there's in particular that you want to pass on to um, someone who's still for some reason indecisive? What's stopping you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This you know, this is the, the, the first ever event in Australia like mm. this. And we've also got workshops before and after the conference mm. as well. So mm. Randine's running a one day workshop, which we mm. just ran a retreat with her, which was yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Um, so she's coming and doing one day workshop on the Thursday beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then Yaren's doing two days afterwards yeah. on the Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And this is the thing about so much that goes on around the conference itself that it's not even just the days that it's not I, just that. yeah yeah that that you get to to learn so much that's that's pretty cool. Okay, so any any final words for anyone still in the side? Like, come on, at this stage, you know, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> at this stage, they have to go. I'm definitely going to be there, especially when it's the first one. You know, you want to be there for. I was there when it was the first one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think also I've had a few people who've said to me, "Oh, we'll, we'll be going to the one that's next year. We're there not running one. one next year. <laughs> it's not going to be held again for another two years. Mm. So yeah. definitely, um, you know." go for it this year, do whatever you can to make it work so that you can come. And, um, and, and in then, two years, we might not do fertility either. Yeah. That might be a different topic. It might be a different topic. That's the thing about, the, again, going back to the value of knowledge and, and those opportunities, you know, when, when they're there, you need to take them because, you know, you just don't know when the, when the next opportunity is going to come. And, you know, it's, it's a lot. I can, I, I can only imagine how much work it is to put this together you know, if it takes over, you know, almost a year, you would have to be planning already for the next one, which is just, uh -huh. you know, as much as it's great love and, and it's fantastic. It's like, okay, we need a break now. <laughs> yeah. This will be an 18 month process to, yes. to plan this conference. So we started planning in May, 2017. So yeah, 18 months ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. So there's a and lot just, of work. Yeah. Just one thing that I'm, I, I'm just thinking from my notes as well. So for people going from Australia, they can get their um, CPDs, PDA, CUs, whatever you call them there. They can get that uh, from, from it as well. I did see on the website that um, some of the ticket options, there are some of the lectures that are going to be uh, recorded in MP3 format. So people can get that too. So that, that's pretty good to have for after again for, for extra learning as well. Am I yeah. missing anything? I didn't mention the cocktail yeah. party, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> if you get a VIP ticket, you'll get some of the recordings. Yeah. Yeah. I did notice that. Yeah. I really like the fact that you have the Q&A there and, and it's, it's so noticeable on the program as well. And I, I think that that's really important that that's really where you, you connect people and you know, that's socializing after too, but definitely having the opportunity to, uh, to talk and ask your questions and talk yeah. to these. And we're really looking forward to Caroline and Lee and Jane being on a, yeah, you yeah. and I together with all their different research. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's again like it's a great opportunity, and to be there when that is happening is just amazing. So yeah. uh, to me, it, it's only you know it, it's only right that I say wow and thank you, and I'm really really looking forward to uh, to being well. Not only I get to visit Australia for the first time. I get to be there at the very first one. So well done and congratulations. <laughs> and thank you, I suppose, as a, as a fertility practitioner, it's not, it's not, the congratulations is one thing, but I feel like I need to say thank you as well for putting this together. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for your support. It's, it's great to have, um, to have people like you behind us and supporting us. So thank you for that.
yeah, it's it's important that the uh, you you keep on doing this and and keep on putting um keep on getting that profession together. I think that's very very important. And just everyone supporting supporting each other. So thank you so much for your time. I promise that I will have this out as quickly as I can just to beat that 31st deadline. And anytime that you want to, like, it's always a pleasure to learn from you. So anytime you want to come on the vlog or if you have any news or any updates or any research, please get in touch. And, and thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Sandra. Bye. Bye. And there you have it. That's the full interview now. You've seen part one before. This is the end of the interview. I hope that I can get them on more and more. I'm sure that I'm going to have a little bit of time when we're there in, in Melbourne to just have a little chat with them. It was, it was such a joy for me to know that it was Claire and Kirsten putting it together. I was like, yes, I am so going to make sure that I can be there because I want to be there. As a practitioner, I do value myself and my work that I want to be there and I want to learn from these people so to all my friends who are going to travel to everyone traveling to get to Australia safe travels make the most out of it and make sure you get to see a little bit around as well so the um, to everyone who is speaking there I wish you all the best that I'm looking forward to your talks and if you have any questions if you want to pass it on go on the website for, for them like any questions about the uh, IICMC iicmc.com that's for international integrative chinese medicine conference and get in touch with kirsten get in touch with claire and i wish you all the best and until next time be kind and be healthy oh baloney the whole thing always gets back to drugs